rocked this impoverished Caribbean nation late this afternoon. The injured are taken to hospital in a country which simply doesn't have the infrastructure to cope. On January 12, 2010, a 7-point earthquake struck near the capital city of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, killing over 300,000 people. Caught in the disaster, a group of Lynn University students and two faculty members who'd arrived in Haiti as part of a humanitarian aid mission, Journey of Hope. They were housed at the Hotel Montana, the site of a massive collapse. One of those students killed was Brittany Gangle, along with five others in her mission group. What happened in Haiti changed Britt's heart that she really wanted to come and help the children of Haiti because she knew that they needed help, and that's who she was. Those that needed the help the most, that's who she wanted to help. You know, so the text message that she had sent me three hours before the earthquake, they love us so much and everyone is so happy. They love what they have and they work so hard to get nowhere, yet they're all so appreciative. I want to move here and start an orphanage myself. And so many people heard her words and people wanted to help us and they wanted to make her last wish come true. And that's how Be Like Brit started, is just by the kindness of people helping us make Brittany's last wish come true. Britt was a beacon of light for the family. She was uh, very confident, loving, compassionate. She was a great girl. And, uh, you know, it's uh, extremely painful even to this day to think about her death and to think about that she was a real, you know, she was real. She was my sister. I loved her more than life itself. And, you know, I protected her here when she was alive and I promised her, you know, protect her forever in this life and throughout eternity. She was a very real person. Uh, I always think sometimes people really hype her up into this uh, almost goddess. And I, I love it because I, she'd get a crack out of it and she'd be like, absolutely, I'm a goddess. You should, you should think that, thank you. And I love that, I love that mentality. Uh, and I love to talk about that with people. And one thing that I really wanted to just bring truth to in all of this is that she was a human. At the end of the day, she was my big sister. And that was the type of person she was. And after 10 years, I still carry that person around with me, just thinking who she was and who she was gonna be. Like I want her here so bad next to me. And so when people ask me, you know, do you feel her in Haiti, do you think? But then I have to giggle because I know she's so in charge down here. I know that she's, she's the one really coordinating everything because this was her last wish. And so when I do look around in Haiti and I see these children, I really do feel, you know, that Brittany is here. But as her mom, selfishly, I just wish she was with me all the time. When you lose a child, it's the, it's the most painful, painful thing of any parent. Um, it takes the life out of you. You don't really heal. You learn how to function in a way that allows you at moments to enjoy your life. And with me, it's been about embracing change. Finding an outlet for their grief, the Gengel family formed the Be Like Brit Foundation that built an orphanage where children live in a safe, nurturing environment. They thrive and learn. They will grow into adults with a bright future. When I received the phone call that Britt was rescued, that Britt was on a helicopter to Port-au-Prince Airport, that, and I quote, 
come down to Florida tonight and you will have your daughter in your arms to go to Lynn University and to have the president of the college look us in the eyes with tears in his eyes and said, we got wrong intel. We don't have your daughter. To lose your daughter or your sister twice in 48 hours is just unfathomable. And that is why we honored Brett and her legacy because we had to show the world that something good could come out of something so horrific. Just seven months after Brittany's body was recovered, land was purchased in Grand Guave, Haiti, to build the orphanage. I came down with Len in September of 2010, and we came here to Grand Guave, and uh, we walked up this hill, and we saw the land, and I looked at Len, and I said, this is it. And then to eventually, you know, see Len's point of view has always been so amazing to me. For him to look at a piece of land and say, this is going to be it. We're going to keep that mango tree there. We're going to build a whole building in the shape of a bee. We're going to put solar panels on there. We're going to do all this, then that. And you know, you're looking at him like, what are you talking about? Like, I mean, the first time I went down was when we started ripping out the rocks and the clay in the mountainside. And that was so much fun. I, I felt like an old time worker. I had a pickaxe. I was out there just chipping away. It was so funny, but after a half hour, I passed out of heat exhaustion. <laughs> it, it just, it astounded me, the, the work ethic of the people and, you know, how willing they were to, you know, put in this hard work for not just themselves, but for the, the charity and for the kids and the understanding of what it was going to do for the community. And it was so amazing to me to see 100, 150 employees just out there grinding away. We could have hired an excavator. I had three of them at home in the States. We could have hired an excavator to do the digging in maybe a week. But we wanted to create jobs. And what you have to understand about Haiti, it's all about jobs, creating economy. And that's what we did. We hired over 100 guys from the mountain. And we created economy. And that's what matters. It was simple, you know, if we're building this building to honor Brittany, uh, we just needed to have um, the symbolism of the bee. And uh, how symbolic is that? So forever and ever, people flying overhead um, into Haiti will see uh, her home and understand that the bee is symbolic of Brittany. We have 33 boys and 33 girls, uh, which of course is symbolic of the 33 days Britt was missing in the rubble at the Hotel Montana. I think it's extremely important for people to understand that we were not going to build a building that was not earthquake proof. We lost our daughter because the most glorious hotel in all of Haiti pancaked and collapsed. And we are not going to do that in a building that's going to honor our daughter. We have the same seismic standards as San Francisco. We have a 9.0 as the design of the building. In Haiti, there's a lack of resources on a daily basis. And so we have a clear goal, and our goal is to be self-sustaining. Um, and that's a challenge in Haiti because there's very little of anything. And uh, sometimes you can get fuel, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you have water, sometimes you can't. 
Electricity is not uh, 24 seven, it's about six to eight hours a day and it's extremely expensive. So our goal was to go off the grid and we did that almost immediately. Within the first year, uh, we installed 100 solar panels on our roof with 72 double-sized maintenance-free batteries and uh, we get about 14 to 16 hours a day off of the solar. As I like to say to people, there's two things for sure in Haiti. One is poverty and the other is sunshine. We've been very blessed that uh, we found a pastor in Jacksonville, Florida that invented a nanotechnology water filter system. And um, that system gives us the purest water that you could ever imagine. But what it allows us to do when we have an ample amount of water in our well is to give 500 to 1,000 gallons of water a day to our community. And that is very powerful to our neighbors because unless you've walked a half a mile with a five gallon bucket on your head, you don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> but to witness that every day and to know that we can make a difference by giving that clean water for them to cook with, for them to bathe with, um, for them to live, water is life. It's challenging but it's a must and, and the more we can save in using natural resources, um, the stronger our organization is gonna be in Haiti. We need to develop a program that is gonna have an impact on the people of Grand Guave. We're gonna do our piece. We came up with the idea to build a guest house next to uh, Brit's home for the Brishonary program. We have three to 400 Brishonaries uh, come into uh, Grand Guave and we have a wonderful program that we developed over the years uh, where we actually build a home, uh, start to finish, uh, for a family in need who's living in a tent or a lean-to or shanty. To watch these missionaries come and, and build that house and by the end of the week hand a key to a family, give them that security. Uh, I always think of uh, Dr. Abraham Maslow's pyramid and and that pyramid of life where the first level is is the physical food water shelter and the second level on that pyramid is safety so when we build a house we've actually brought them two levels up on the pyramid of life. And that is what's so powerful of our Brishonary program. And so I designed in 2014 the first Be Like Brit house and we made it hurricane proof. And that is what's so powerful of our Brishonary program. They think they're coming to help Haiti. And in actuality, it's Haiti that helps them. And that's so beautiful to witness. We've had over a thousand uh, people come to Haiti to build, and we've built hundreds of houses. So this has worked well for us at Brit's Home in changing the lives of thousands of people. We depend on people to help us in so many different ways. 
and that's so that our kids can go to school and that they can have three meals a day, that um, we have 110 staff members that they need to feed their families and send their children to school. And so we're able to do that through all of our events that we have every year. We have child sponsorships. We have, um, you know, people donate. They come from our, off our wish list. And last year alone, we had over $80,000 worth of, of supplies donated to us, which means we didn't have to spend $80,000 worth of supplies. And all of this goes to helping our children, our staff, and our community in Haiti, because we build a home, um, every time we have a trip that comes down to Haiti and we are part of this community and we want the best for this community because our children are here. The first child arrived at the orphanage on what would have been Brittany's 23rd birthday, January 21st, 2013. Other children soon followed, and today they live protected, nurtured, and loved unconditionally to be a part of the Be Like Brit family forever. So we put together a program committee that included like Len's sister Chris, Deb Pilato Fontaine, who was a Professor at Becker, Father Madden at uh, St. John's Church, Sue Johnson, who was a friend and did medical, and Suzanne Brady, who was a co-worker of Chrissy's, and they, they were in child development, because this was all going to be all about children. And so we sat, and really for the two years that Len was building the building, we would meet on a regular basis, and we came up with a 39-page document, called we call it our guiding principles, and this is, you know, who were we going to take in here? How were we going to raise them? What was going to happen on the inside of the building? And so many tears, many discussion, and we decided to use the United Nations rights of a child because they're Haitian children, not American children. We want to be respectful of the culture. And we always say, with a little bit of gangalism in, in there as well. She's done an amazing job. She's mommy loved or tea loved to the children here at Brit's home. It takes great dignity to serve others and uh, uh, mummy love brings that to, to be like Brit in Brit's home every day and we feel uh, very blessed to have her here. She is my confidant and my right hand in Haiti and has just been a great attribute. Uh, and role model for our children. It's an amazing journey. The love, the kids, the staff, just to see the kids growing up and, and how you know, we're able to balance the Haitian part and the American part with them, which, which makes them so much more um, productive because you know they are we don't want to take away from their Haitian culture they do keep their Haitian culture but by the same time if they're going to be global they have to understand how other things work outside of Haiti so that's where the American part comes in and the kids are doing extremely well and they they, they just want to learn so much and they also know that they will the chances of them having a chance here is a lot slimmer if they don't have a certain education for them to be able to go out and bring it back here. So um, with that, they just, they just learn, they just absorb everything, and they're just having such a good time with life. For a kid to be successful, or for a person to be successful here in Haiti, you gotta know three languages, Creole, French, and English. Most of our children did not go to school before they came to us, but now since they've been here, they've had consistent education and they'll continue to do that. So someone like Del Yen, who's only in seventh grade, I always say it's, you know, it's sad, but it's happy because she's had that consistent education and will continue to have that. When we know that she wants to go on to college and that's what it be like Brit allows her to do is to continue her education. If you ask her, she wants to be a diplomat, which I love. One day I would like to be a diplomat because I love it. And I would like to meet more people and speak a lot of language, fly in order to a lot of country, because I love language. Technology will set Haiti free, in, in my opinion and in my perspective. I, 
You know, right now there's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of jobs available remotely. And if you speak English and you have internet connection, you could easily become an employee or start your own online business uh, here in Haiti and stay in Haiti and collect U.S. dollars. You can convert it to good if you want to, but you know, I'm a big believer in that technology is going to set Haiti free. And in order to do that, our kids have to be proficient in uh, computers, whether it be Mac, PC. And I think with the entrepreneurial classes that we're doing here with our kids, I, I see great hope with them starting their own online business. You know, it would be an honor to see them. It would be a really proud uncle. One of my goals is to have our children and create a call center for them to work at. And that call center will compete with call centers in India, in China, in the Philippines. They will be able to live in Haiti and actually work on the world stage, make US dollars, and actually create a middle class in Haiti which doesn't exist. Sometimes it's really, it can be very overwhelming. Um, but when you see like our birthday parties, I always like, I kind of sit back and I really kind of take it in and I get very emotional about it because I wonder like where would that child be? And it's not me and Lynn personally, you know, when I say be like Brit, it is the thousands of people that have helped that one child to celebrate his or her birthday and to give them that education because it took so many for people for us to get to this point. And it is extremely humbling for us to know that people are still with us and want, not for Lynn and I, but want more for the children of Haiti, want more for the people of Haiti and that they've fallen in love. And I think. You know, that's one of Brit's greatest gifts is that, yes, her text message, but so many more people now know about Haiti and that they're aware of what's going on in Haiti. And I always say, I don't like why Be Like Brit started, but I love what I do every day because I see the good in people. Whether you're in Haiti, whether you're in the United States or across the world, people are helping and I get to see the good in that. And so when I see the children growing up, they don't have, they're not worried about, am I eating today? Where am I going to sleep today? Am I going to school today? Like they just have to be children. And so when they're on the playground here and just playing and being children and not worrying about everything, that's pretty incredible. They love us so much. They see us as brothers. And I find it so amazing because I lost a sister, but I got 33 of them and then 33 brothers. You know, and it's so beautiful to me. When the crisis happened and after Britt was recovered in the beginning stages of grief, I wanted revenge. And uh, I didn't know what I was going to do, but when I came to Haiti, it was almost like the kids healed my soul and uh, the love of the people healed my heart. You know, the kids stole my heart, they really did. Building the orphanage the Britchinaries, the kids, all of the supporters, you know, that, that's what really helped heal the pain. I never thought Haiti would be a home of mine, but it is. And it's a beautiful place, great people, and even greater kids. So it's been a, been a beautiful journey. Brittany Gengel was a passionate, caring, fun-loving 19-year-old who lost her life in the devastating earthquake of January 2010. Honoring her legacy is the driving motivation behind the vision of the Be Like Brit Foundation to raise the next generation of leaders in Haiti. You know, I honestly believe if we can make the world a little bit better before we leave this earth, we have accomplished great things. And that's my goal for our children. Not to give them a handout, 
but to empower them and teach them how to self-sustain. And that's the greatest gift of any parent, to teach our children how to be independent, how to be able to take care of oneself, and how to help others. And that's what we're doing.